Hi there, welcome to another edition of 411 Pop Culture. This is your host, Justin Steele. Today, I have a very special guest, Jackie Clark. Thank you for joining me today, Jackie. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, we are going to be talking about the uh, Halloweens 4 and 5 and the Halloween collection overall as we anticipate the new Halloween movie coming out in just a couple awesome. weeks. Now, I grew up with horror movies. Uh, Jackie did not grow up with horror movies, so we've had a sort of ritualized every Wednesday horror movie marathon. And uh, one of the first ones we started off with was Halloween. So I think it was our very first one. I think it was, yeah. yeah. Now, for, for you watching this now, this is the second time you've seen these, and I feel like the second experience is even better, you know? In some ways, you're even more afraid because you become more attached to the characters. Oh, for sure. And, you know, each, but each one does have a different style, or at least each coupling, meaning I feel like Halloween's one and two have a very similar cinematography, similar look. I feel like Halloween's four and five have also a similar look. But it's kind of different from those. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You know, the, the one and two go together, four and five go together. And you saw, you watched part three? I did. Definitely. Yeah. What did you think about part three? It was confusing. Sure. But um, altogether, I liked it. Um, it was a fun one, you know. I had, I just watched it for the first time. Did you enjoy the jingle, the three more days to Halloween? Oh my gosh! It, it, it's honestly, I watched it a week ago, and it's been ringing in my head <laughs> for a whole week now. See, that's so. probably you know, in my when I was five, six, seven, riding the school bus to school, you know, we just sort of sang it as this sort of ritual, ritualized thing, and you're you know, it was actually from a movie. So when I first heard, it, I was like, oh, that's what we sang. <laughs> so of the Halloween movies, you know, watching them again for a second time, which uh, do you prefer? one and two or do you prefer four or five you know which which of those set do you think is scarier and or which one do you think is more fun i think the the originals halloween one and two are definitely very scary um halloween one isn't quite as scary as halloween two i think just because there's a whole, whole lot of backstory and you know you gotta learn about the characters and you have to see michael as a child first before you learn about him and then you know, you come Halloween 4 and 5, I think it's a little bit more fun. I think it's a little bit more emotional just because you have the background from 1 and 2. You know Jamie's mom, Lori Strode. So it kind of, it pulls you in a little bit more emotionally. But more like scary in that way because you're watching a little girl and you have, you, you care about this little girl for, and you just met her. She is incredibly vulnerable. Super you know? vulnerable. But she's super brave. Absolutely. I, so I mean, strong. And I'd like to clarify right now, so there's no doubt, I love Danielle Harris. And I do want to talk about her a little bit more, especially in terms with what happened in part six and what's now happening again. But I agree, you know, and I, I feel like there's definitely a group out there. The majority of people might even consider us blasphemous. But, you know, I definitely think, the original Halloween is a masterpiece, but for me, when I watched them, I thought part two was much, much more scary. Yes, definitely. I, you know, I think like, I mean, I love Jamie Lee Curtis. I think that was actually a big part of why I got into the Halloween series. I grew up with My Girl and uh, True Lies was is one of my favorite action movies of all time. So when I, I had already seen both of those before I watched the original Halloween. So I was like, oh, okay, this is, I like Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, I'm going to watch it. I grew really attached. I understand now why she's, you know, I think she's always been fond of her role as Laurie Strode. Mm -hmm. But I think that she's embraced it more now, especially right. after Halloween okay. H2O and now with this upcoming movie. Yeah, I thought at the time, though, Halloween 2 was scarier. I thought it had more action, more suspense definitely, coming at you. Definitely. Um, and I think, you know, for me personally, Halloween's four and five are more fun. Have some coffee. Now, for me, one of the favorite parts in watching horror movies, I mean, I have a lot of different factors. You know, I'm all about iconic villains, but it is always the final girl for me. You know, that is the person I think the audience relates to. Consider where we are at in a time of sexual discrimination, women in Hollywood, I do feel like the horror genre is one of the few genres that really showcase strong female women. Definitely. And I do want to talk a little bit about the final girls of Halloween's 1 and 2, Halloween's 4 and 5. You know, I'm curious, Jackie, as to your opinion of 
Danielle Harris's interpretation of a final girl versus Jamie Lee Curtis's. Do you think right. one is more vulnerable or do you think, you know, one is more relatable? Or what was just in general your feelings about Laurie Strode versus Jamie Lloyd? Laurie Strode is definitely vulnerable as a character. I mean, she's a 16 year old girl and she's babysitting and she's taking care of these children. And then she has to, you know, she's thinking of them first and just kind of doing her own thing and making sure like, you know, Michael, no, my, like, I, right. We have to kill him. We we can't let him get the kids and then sends them down the street. Um, she's definitely vulnerable and she's definitely strong. And then with Jamie Lloyd, you know, you, she kind of already has, the whole town already has knowledge about Michael Myers and what he does. So, you know, she gets picked on. Your uncle's the boogeyman. And I wish I think, those kids were terrible to her. Terrible. <laughs> oh, they're so mean. Kids are mean. Kids are so mean. Jamie. And I think it's true to life, you know? So, <laughs> so mean. But she was, she was def I think she was definitely more vulnerable because she was younger. But at the same time, I feel like she also had her own level of strength and bravery. What do you think in terms of maybe a maybe a more fair comparison that would be between Laurie Strode and Rachel Carruthers? You yes. know, they're both babysitting. They're both in Definitely. late teens, yep. insecure with boys. You know, do you think, uh, did you have any more of an attachment to Rachel versus Laurie? Or do you think they were both pretty similar? I think I was definitely more attached to Rachel. I was definitely more attached to Rachel oh, than yeah? Lori. Yeah. Um, yeah. Strangely enough, I think it was because of my. I was a little bit more attached to Jamie just meeting her because you know we had already know, known about Lori and, she, you know she's, she, you know you, you already your heart already hurts for her like. Yeah. She's lost both of her parents. She's their kids are teasing her. Then seeing the way Rachel interacts with her definitely makes, I think I have a stronger connection with Rachel. And what do you think about, I think there's a sort of, you know, a lot of people feel betrayed going from Halloween four to five with spoilers ahead. Stop it right now if you're watching. <laughs> I highly doubt you haven't seen this though. Rachel, you know, what happens to her towards the beginning of Halloween four or five. Five, yeah. I, you know, I think it was supposed to be sort of a Hitchcockian reference of, you know, taking a famous actress or an, a beloved character and eliminating them to raise the stakes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's effective. However, Rachel is a beloved character. So, you know, I was betrayed. You do. You feel I a little bit betrayed. betrayed. You know, they did that with aliens to <laughs> alien three with oh, Newt definitely. and Hicks, but like, so we lose Rachel and then we have another final girl character. I mean, she, you know, she doesn't make T it. Tina. But yes, <laughs> Tina, played by Wendy Kaplan. Did you enjoy the character of Tina? I did enjoy the character of Tina. I was confused at how she fit in with the whole group. I was like, you know, because all of a sudden she's just, you know, going into Jamie's hospital room and she's got a dog. And I'm like, oh, here's this new girl we've never seen before. And then they take away Rachel. And I'm like, well, what are we doing now? And then... It's all, it's the Tina show and it's, you know. Well, I always about... thought too, it would be interesting because in Halloween four, Rachel played by Ellie Cornell does have a friend that she's in the car with named Lindsay, who also has that sort of same Madonna ass, like a brunette Madonna look of the eighties, mm -hmm. you know, the denim jacket, the black hair flowing. I, you know, at first I thought maybe they were supposed to be the same character, but uh, her name is Lindsay and the age would be appropriate that Lindsay would have been the age she would be about 17 compared to Lindsay Wallace from the first movie where uh, Lori was babysitting Lindsay. I thought maybe that was supposed to be some sort of reference or homage like, well, she's actually friends with Lindsay. So I thought at least if they had done um, with Tina, they could have had Lindsay and actually that would have at least mm -hmm. had some sort of continuity for right. bringing her randomly from four to five. Right. I mean, the character of Tina, you know, people either She's love so her. She's so fun. She's so fun. Right. People either love her, <laughs> love to hate her, or they just hate her. I, I love her. You know, I, love her. I, I, you know, I definitely see, you know, problematic elements. You know, people said she's a, say that she's annoying. I don't think she's annoying. I think she's just a 17 year old that's full of life. She's like a, she says, <laughs> it makes you feel like neon, you know, like, right. Yeah. You know. She's a, you know, she's a 17 year old girl and she's, a very relatable character and she is a lot of fun. I think the first time I watched 
the movie. I wanted to hate her. Like, I loved to hate her just because I was mad that they took Rachel sure, away from me. Sure, for sure. But then the second time through, I really connected with her, like, on an even higher level. And I definitely love Tina. Definitely root for her the whole time. And I, and do... I like her relationship with Jamie. Yeah. Because sure. she does have a bond, you she know. She has a very strong bond. Jamie's concerned more for Tina than herself. Like, she's running from her. She's, Tina! Continuing to speak about Jamie Lloyd, uh, and specifically Danielle Harris... There's a documentary on the full collection called Jamie's Story, which recounts the behind the scenes information about what happened to Danielle Harris's involvement in the franchise and how ultimately, you know, she was taken out of uh, the sixth movie, you know, even then in H2O, because now we have a new movie coming up and they're going to be readjusting the timeline anymore. It's becoming one of those choose your own adventure books right. where, let's see, so we've got Halloween's one, two, four, five, six. 1, 2, H2O Resurrection, then you go Rob Zombie, 1, 2, Halloween 3's in there, and now we're going to do Halloween 1, and then Halloween, I guess, 2018. Maybe somebody can comment below, because I don't know yet what they're really calling it, other than I'm, Halloween. So right. you got Halloween, and then Halloween. Right. You know, but anyway, <laughs> for although you were a fan of uh, Danielle Harris's performance in Halloween's 4 and 5, and... Definitely, definitely. I mean, I love her. I thought she was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, to see this little girl, the whole laundry shoot sequences, I think one of my favorite all-time sequences in a horror definitely, movie. You know, definitely. The tension is so, so high. Oh, yeah. You're scared the whole time, and then he starts stabbing through the vent, and she's not there, but it's like, oh, my gosh, where is she? Right, and, right. Like, how are you? She just climbed up the wall, she and she's really all did the way that. Like, that's She crazy. really did that. I mean, that it's wasn't, crazy. you know, yeah. I think they did, I mean, they had it, like, on the side at one point for certain angles, but she really was up in there, and there really was a real knife being used, and, I mean, she's a brave little girl, which translates to the character of oh, Jamie Lloyd. Sure. Uh, but what do you think about Halloween 6? They end up replacing her, and she has no ill will Danielle Harris to J.C. Brandy, who took over the role, but, um, you know, they kind of were shifty with her about it, and do you think that's kind of fair? Like, do you think that Danielle Harris gave enough of a performance that she should have been given a little bit more respect in terms of what she contributed? Oh, I definitely think so. I definitely think so. Um, Halloween 4, you know, it's all about her, you know, it's all about Jamie. And they have all the little flashbacks, like when she goes and picks out her Halloween costume, and she picks out basically the same thing that Michael wore right, as a child. Right. And she's a she's a very strong character, and then she comes back in you know the fifth one, and we're like, she's not as crazy, you know, she's not crazy like Michael. Right. She's not a serial killer. But... Question, real quick, would you have liked for them to have continued? On? They, I mean. Danielle Harris believes that at one point they were going to continue that on her becoming sort of Michael Myers' sidekick or being evil. The Akkads, who d produced and did you know did all the financial stuff for the movies, they said that was never the case. Would you have liked to have seen you know the character of Jamie Lloyd instead of Halloween Four going to Five where she's mute and having a, a psychological issues mm -hmm. that are like in a good light so to speak, as in like she's still good, uh, or would you have? Do you, would you have been interested to see Oh, definitely. A, an evil Jamie Lloyd? Definitely. After the first time I watched Halloween 4, you know, it ends and she's at the top of the staircase and Dr. Loomis is screaming and you see him, like, screaming. It's because he's, like, recognizing the look in her eye that Michael had when he was a child. And when I finished watching that movie, I thought, so she just killed Michael and now she's going to be the new Michael. Like, right. I thought it like... I thought before knowing anything about it, after seeing four, I was like, so she just killed Michael Myers, but she's going to come back and she's going to be the serial killer. And then that's not how it went. But I kind of was excited for that. Yeah, it's I an interesting that idea. Fun. I don't know how far they could have taken it or right. how scary, you know, she's so little. You know, I think it's an interesting idea. I, I would like to comment that I have, you know, a theory of mine. I, I, I find some people question why she was, though, mute in the uh, the fifth movie. And I always interpret it as, you know, Michael Myers, after he did his first attack, um, yes, he ended up killing his sister, but just, I, I would even go with just attack, you know, he never spoke again, and I feel like, I always interpreted five, the reason why, and it is frustrating, but why Jamie doesn't talk for the first half of the movie is because she just did her first attack, and she was, like, potential, you know, had the potential to become evil, which is why she lost her voice, and basically, you know, it's her struggle of getting her voice back, is then when she becomes okay again, you right. know? 
But anyway, I just want to throw that out there. I always feel right. like there's confusion of or frustration as to why, why she doesn't mute. speak. And I'm right. like, I always thought it was pretty obvious, you know. But right, I thought that me. was pretty obvious too when yeah. I watched it. Even even the first time, I was like, okay, it makes sense. She doesn't talk because Michael didn't talk. Exactly. So and then you know her character develops in a different way than Michael, and she being she does speak again. So. It made sense to me. And we don't so. know how much, how much, you know, we don't really know much about Michael Myers' parents and history as far as if they came to ever visit them. But, you know, Jamie was surrounded by Rachel still coming there, Tina coming to visit. Mm -hmm. She had a friend in Billy, so it was kind of suggestive that she had still love and support. So she was right. able to, uh, you know, come out of it. One good thing about Daniel Harris not being able to come back for Halloween 6 and this is you know straight from danielle harris's mouth you know she said this in jamie's story the documentary that she was able to come back though for rob zombies halloween one and two and you know that may not have happened if her portrayal of jamie lloyd had had a complete arc i do think that rob zombies interpretation was just a lot of information you know what else are you going to do we've already had the story over and over again you know, it's the mystery of Michael Myers, but whether or not they keep that mystery after eight or nine films, it, you know, Michael Myers is iconic. You know, there's only so much mystery anyway. So I disagreed with a chunk of it, um, especially in the unrated version. The whole, there's a whole rapey sequence thing that's just, it doesn't belong in the horror, in the Halloween movies. And it's just gross. It's all about the examination of, you know, rape or this or that but not you know in the in the context that they did it it was more for shock than to sort of give out some sort of message you know and anyway so they i did like rob zombies uh, halloween's one and two i think he liked them better than he says he did uh rob zombie i thought halloween two had a lot of interesting stuff it's a little bit bleak but one thing that i definitely it was going to be kind of okay with me no matter what because of them bringing back daniel harris as annie brackett but now it seems like they're they're kind of doing a repeat of the mid 90s where Danielle Harris wasn't involved with part 6 and they kind of like pushed her to the side and you know they're doing that again because Jamie Lee Curtis uh Laurie's character has a daughter and I just thought this was such an opportunity you know it's 2018 what an opportunity to have the definitive Halloween movie where you take the the best elements and I'm all for you know, I'm all for them skipping through and taking, you know, starting a new timeline. If it works for the film, if it makes things easier, I'm all about that. But if you're going to erase the history, then why not just have Danielle Harris play the, the uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's daughter? I'm sure that Judy okay. Greer is going to do a fine job. She's funny. She's good. Especially because Danielle Harris wanted to do it. You know, I just thought that that was kind of crappy. Would you have liked to have seen you know, Danielle Harris come back for uh, the new Halloween movie? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. She, I mean, she played Jamie. So, like, Jamie is such a relatable character. No matter what age you are, you can relate to that little right. girl. And I hurt for her that she wasn't able to be a part of the, that they just pushed yeah. her aside. And, you know, she wasn't in, you know, sex and... She's not in this well, one. I feel like Jamie Lee Curtis is the, the scream queen. Jamie Lee Curtis is the scream queen of the franchise. And I think that J uh, Daniel Harris is the princess. You know, and I feel like if they're going to change a timeline around, switch things around, because she wouldn't be playing Jamie Lloyd anymore. Mm -hmm. But Daniel Harris, you know, is the right age. She's still here. She's relevant. And I think that her contributions, especially at a time where Halloween's four and five... I think people love them, but I think that also they get more people become more critical of them, you know, because they're '80s cheesy horror movies in their own way. I think they're a right step above most cheesy '80s horror movies. However, I think that it almost kind of discounts that those movies mattered, and I I don't think they matter to the timeline, but I do think that they kept the franchise alive. You know, as much as we love a good horror icon like Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, those final girls matter just as much exactly. you know it's like getting heather lane camp back for the nightmare series or sigourney weaver in the alien movies mm -hmm. and uh i think danielle harris also 
So, Jackie, we have been watching horror movies for the for a little over a year now. We have our Wednesday night ritual. Um, so what are some of your favorite horror movies that we've watched in this past year? Well, oh geez. I gotta go with the Alien series, just right it's right off the favorites. bat. I, I like the, because I got really into outer space right when we started watching them, so I loved the in space, the, no in one can space. hear you scream. Right. You know, well, that was Jackie's first uh, real jump scare. You know, we probably watched about like 10, 11 movies before we watched the original Alien. You know, I've been waiting. You know, I could see her. She got scared. <laughs> she enjoyed the movies. But it was finally for the first time. It was when Dallas, played by Tom Skerritt, climbs into that uh, air shaft. And, you know, he's crawling along. And Jackie kind of sits up a I little bit. Sitting and is watching it. On the it. edge of my seat. And then the alien just does that. I'm like, she I'm like, flung myself uh, back on the couch. It was terrific. It was so gratifying <laughs> to finally have some jump scares. And we've had a few since then. But I feel like uh, some of the biggest ones have been for her, for you, for the uh, Alien series. So Definitely. I don't know. What else? What other horror movies? Um... Well, the Stir of Echoes. Yeah, I remember you liked that with that was, Bacon. That was a really good one. It was so intense. Yeah. I liked that a lot. Um, you seem to really enjoy 90 psychological thrillers. Like, we watched uh, oh, for sure. Single White Female. We watched Breakdown, okay. The Good Son. Mm -hmm. You remember those? Did you like The oh, Good yeah. Son? Uh, That's with yes, Macaulay yes, Culkin yes. and Elijah Wood. I remember that one. I thought, because that was oh one of my, my favorite gosh, ones. Oh my gosh, that was so good. Intense, that whole cliffhanger ending. I forgot about, ending. yes, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, that and was one of my favorite the, things, it's like favorite ones. the end of it, and she's got to choose, and it's like, oh my gosh. And she, the worst she, choice. she chooses right, but she oh my gosh. She does choose right, but it is the worst choice it's for like, a mother to have to make. You're just like, <laughs> you're watching it, and I just want to like claw my eyes out. Like, oh my gosh, this can't be happening. I'm like, that one's good. And then, what are some of your you what are your what are some of your childhood movies movies you've watched since uh, childhood that you've enjoyed? Because you didn't watch really horror movies. No, I didn't really watch a lot of horror Did movies. Did you watch I any watched, like romantic comedies? I watched, or? Oh yeah, um, a good romantic. I liked uh, there Six Days and Seven Nights. Oh so yeah, that's a, that's a good one for me. Yeah. That's that's a fun Anne one. Hesh, um, uh, Harrison I love Ford. It. I Come love on, Harrison. F I love <laughs> Harrison Ford. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I fell in love with him in that movie, and I. It is a good one. Sense I don't feel like it's been it, like really labeled a classic, but I think it's a classic. I think it's great. You know, I think yeah. it's, it's, it's funny. Not, and it's not heavily like romantic. Right. It is a very it is a romantic movie, but it's mostly action and it's like it is a nice you know, blend. I like, think they're blended both very well. Very, very well. And it's you know, David Schwimmer's character is hilarious yeah, he is in really it. Funny. He's you know, he's just that overbearing boyfriend, want you know, fiance and then you know, she's like, well, I got to go to work. He's like, nah, you can miss me. Go ahead, do your job. I'll be here waiting. And then, <laughs> you know, he's not really there waiting for at the end. And yeah, he's like that doesn't... prototypical, stereotypical, sensitive guy, but that also can be kind of, a, you know, when it push comes to shove, he cheats. He does the, you know, I mean, he, do, he means well. Of course, you know, he, he has the big dramatic, like, what have I done? You yes. know, this is my, you know, and then when he finds out, she, or she, he finds out she might be dead. But no, that's such a funny movie. It For is such, sure. And the, the energy in it's really good. Definitely. You know, um, it's like arg. Pirates <laughs> as an arg, and they're chasing, and we've got gold. Like okay, stereotype. The airplane Go sequence ahead, just, where she's taking the the <laughs> like, made it, I don't made know. It, my doctor just <laughs> attention Kmart shoppers. That's Not so just... funny. <laughs> Are you a big fan of music? You like definitely grew up more classic rock. Um, my dad listened to a lot of classic rock, so I know such like, as like the Beatles, the Stones. Like that's a lot of the music that I listen to. You're listening to something on the radio or anything you might download. What do you uh, What are you digging right now? Uh, right now, I mean, at the moment, for the past week or so, I've been listening to a lot of Eminem because okay. his, I mean, his new album came out, so like. I've been listening to that, and I listen. I've started listening to a lot more of his old school stuff because up until my Eminem phase, I listened to a lot more Alicia Keys, Amy Winehouse. I love like I love, Keys. I like songs that I can sing along to, so I look for that like strong vocal. You're a fan a woman, of karaoke. So. Oh yeah. What are some of your go-to songs? What's your? Do you have any warm-up songs like? I think, you know, going karaoke, because I love karaoke too, I mm -hmm. feel like there's always a song or two that I know I'm going to do okay with no matter what, so that's a go-to right. to get me going over those nerves. For sure. Uh, do you have any songs like that? Um, yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody. Queen, uh, okay. Queen. Mm -hmm. um, that's, a, that's a good one. It's 
and it's like you know it's a fun if one I, no matter how nervous i am the crowd's gonna sing Always. along with yeah, it anyway nice. as soon as i get to mama <laughs> like hey, they're gonna are... sing along so then that gives me kind of the build-up to go into my Alicia Keys. I like to sing a lot of Amy Winehouse, like Back to Black. That's a good one for me. Um, just recently, um, a couple weeks ago, I actually sang Kelly Clarkson, Because of You. Oh, that's, like, that's my favorite I Kelly was, Clarkson song. I was scared because I know that it gets a little, like, a little bit higher notes, and yeah. I lost my voice earlier, but I went up and I belted it out, and I, you uh, know. <laughs> any concerts? Have you gone to any concerts or anything? The most recent concert was when I went and I saw the Beatles cover cover band the fab four um and they put on a hell of a show it's like i thought i was actually at a beatles concert which is you know impossible um but it was so fun I and i just bands. i loved i loved it it was just like you know and and all the people there who know the music so as they're singing we're all singing along you know you get you know you start singing hey jude and na na and the whole nah, crowd nah, nah. is singing along with it and it's such i mean i just a, you know you're right it's yes. but i love <laughs> then, tribute bands in fact you know i i i went to see uh bjorn again which was a uh an abba tribute band and, wow. you know i thought for the longest time that was the closest i was ever going to get to see abba but there's always fun kitschy stuff too at those places like we have this condom here that says take a chance on me you know? <laughs> I would, you know, I, they, I went and saw this concert about ten years ago, so I'm definitely never going <laughs> to use that. Don't be using that. that. <laughs> but uh, I always thought that was cute and funny. Hey. Thank you, Jackie, so much for being here today. This was a pleasure, and uh, I mean, honestly, this is Wednesday night as we're doing this, so we're probably going right. to watch a couple horror movies after this. <laughs> for sure. But um, you know, I always like to wrap it up with just a little, little note or two about what we hope for for the world right now, a little bit more that can make it a little bit better. For sure. Um, I, th I just think we should all be nicer to each other, you know, like if to tie it into Halloween four, you know, bullying is a big issue. And like with the kids, the kids in that movie bullied Jamie so much. She ran out of school crying. They were chanting, Jamie's an orphan and which every like, you know yeah. bullying in general, general is horrifying. And that's a really horrifying that's thing horrifying. to bully like, somebody about. She's like, you know they even brought up her mom They're like jamie's mommy is dead and it's like how are you gonna say that to a little girl and right. then they're chanting jamie's an orphan it's just it's so mean and it breaks my heart and it's and that's not just in the movies that's like real life i mean it's not always as harsh as that but you know you gotta worry like kids out there are cruel right uh, you, you know, know on a conscious level and on a subconscious level i think things like that affect people for the rest of, the rest of their lives definitely i think they'll definitely. take it for granted and be like well some people think it's just kids being kids etc but these kids are eventually going to be the adults exactly. you know exactly. and it's it's uh, like the, it's hate. like the idea of boys will be boys like mm, maybe we should teach them how to be good men though like, right <laughs> right how about how about we don't write a, write off the way we act? How about we don't say, oh, well, I'm stuck in my ways. No, you're old enough that you can still learn to be better. Yes. We, should all, we should always try to be better. We should, we should always aspire to be better than the day before. 100%. And I think, you know, it's, it's a big, that's a big deal with adults saying kids can just be kids. And that's a big deal with adults being like, well, I'm set in my ways. Like, we, can, we all have the capability of learning. A friend's father of mine once said to me that, you know, because I when I went or after graduating college that they they must have brainwashed me and you know I read a meme the other day that said something along the lines of hey so college you know brainwashed me to to be a liberal or was it the fact that it was the education and the study of other cultures that made me have that perspective right. or something along those lines and it's like I mean it's so obvious and Ah, oh, people, but uh, I really am glad you did this with me, Jackie. We got to talk a little bit about yeah. Halloween's 4 and 5, and Jackie will continue on her quest of finishing up the second time through of Halloween's, and in just a week or two, we will be watching uh, the new Halloween movie, so I look yeah. forward to having you back to uh, talk yeah. about it. Thanks, everybody, for watching 411 Pop Culture, where real people talk about really everything. everything. Thank you.